Welcome to Agency for Agents, a podcast for real estate team leaders and independent brokerage owners looking to maximize profits, effectiveness, and gain freedom for their team and business. Your hosts, Christine Andreasen and Aaron Hendon, have been running one of the most successful real estate teams in the Seattle area for more than eight years. They know building a winning team means finding ways to empower, nurture, train, and develop individual agents to discover their own power, their own agency. On the podcast, Christine and Aaron interview thought leaders in real estate and personal growth to help you impact both your performance and your teams. We know it takes a lot, and leaders and brokers that crack that code reap the rewards of success greater than any they could ever achieve on their own. Yeah, well, we're on this podcast because uh, Aaron and I really, you know, it's called Abundant Life Podcast, you know, and I think there's a million and 14, last time I counted, podcasts that'll tell you how to sell 10 more houses or 30 more houses. And that's not what we're about. We like talking to people who are running teams or even small brokerages about how to have an extraordinary life and how do you empower your agents and how how to be really successful and not be somebody who's driving yourself nuts every day, you know, because you don't get any time or you don't have a you know time with your family or time on your boat or whatever. So we really are looking for empowering, um, fulfilling, abundant ideas more than, hey, let's get some tips to sell 10 more houses. So that's this conversation. And yesterday, I'll tell you, Lisa, yesterday we had a fun, we had a fun time because we started talking war stories, you know, and I think those are like just now even, you know, those are the kind of things that when you have an agent who's thinking about starting a team, they want to know that too. They want to hear about the crazy. They want to hear like, what should I be prepared for when I'm starting a team? Now, I know that you're a top New York broker and that you've been in real estate and or investing for 40 years, but I don't know how big your team is or do you own your own brokerage? So tell us a little bit about you. Yeah. So I work for Sotheby's International Real Estate. I did know you. Yep. I've been an agent there for, like you said, over 40 years. I started when I was about 16. Seriously. um, That's awesome. My boyfriend who became my husband's uh, mother uh, was the head of a, of a large real estate company in Manhattan. And I just, you know, that was like my first job. This is the only career you've ever had. Typing leases and filing and, you know, doing that type of thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I quickly got into sales and, um, I did on-site sales. I've done every type of product, you know, conversions, ground up, sitting in meetings with new development projects. You've done it all. I have to say, I, I, I really, the only part of the business that I would say oh. is not my forte, and that's the paperwork. <laughs> right. Um, but uh, luckily, I have, I have good support, so, yeah. so that works well. Now, do you, you have know, a team? Or are you, you have a, I know yeah, you have a oh, So in the city, I have a team. And about a year and a half ago, um, I expanded to the Hamptons out in Long Island. And I've been out here for 25 years, but now I, I, uh, I'm representing properties um, as well as just enjoying the Hamptons, which is really incredible. You know, a beautiful part of, of the world, really. So you have like incredible beaches and just, you know, lots of luxury in every area. But done in a, a very, you know, not like Rodeo Drive-ish, you know, it's it's done in very quaint style, but very mm-hmm. elegant and sophisticated and charming. Yeah, Hamptons are beautiful. Um, but yeah, really nice. And then the city is doing incredible. We've done 50% more deals than in the height of the market, like back in 2004. Wow. And honestly, just from an informative perspective, I closed on a $7.6 million deal that we did over Zoom. Wow. I never saw it until after he closed. Wow. So it's a different world now in many, many ways. Now, look, that could have been a, it, it clearly is, you know, a unique situation, maybe even a one off, you know, a lottery ticket sort of experience. But I see it as all new possibilities. 
I see it as things are being created now that one would have never thought of before, you know? So I saw it as growth where everybody was, you know, you know, the word was pivoting. That was the buzzword. Right? I was using possibilities and growth. Um, I always wanted to expand anyway. I thought maybe I'd expand somewhere else, not here, but this is how it worked out. And it's it's just, yeah, I'm here now actually in the Hamptons. And then I was in the city on Tuesday. So, but a lot of Manhattan, Manhattanites, you know, come to the Hamptons. Yeah. I mean, that is, that is their, you know, summer playground, so to speak, right? But I've been selling real estate or involved in real estate, like I said, since I was 16. Wow. Um, and I just, I love it. Like I honestly, other than being Barbara Walters, I love to interview people. I couldn't think of doing anything else than what I did. I get to see like, you know, and represent like incredible properties. So it's my love. It's my passion. You know, uh, my other passions, uh, I could name two. One is, of course, my family, my son. My, my, I come from, you know, European, you know, backgrounds and families, you know, it's what it's about, right? So, I mean, everybody's about family all over the world. Everybody has extended families. And then my charities. I do a lot of charitable work for homeless youth. Um, I do a lot of, you know, children are definitely because they're so vulnerable and, you know, really have no one to protect them. I do uh, work with God's Love We Deliver that delivers food to people that can't feed themselves because they're too sick. So I would say those are like my three passions, you know, and even the charity work is real estate related, you know, (laughs) homes for my goodness. I I can't think of, you know, like a a child living on the street, like it's like not right. So, yeah, but This is a very up and down business in every way, you know, like you have a deal, you don't have a deal, your emotions are high, your emotions are low, your energy is higher. And, you know, it's a, it's a very, it's not like, you know, we're coming in and just kind of like every day is so different, you know, especially when you start growing and now you are like, you love sales, but now you like have that managerial hat as well. Mm -hmm. Right. So you know, how do you make decisions so that you do re- live an abundant life, right? Yeah. So I once heard this analogy, and actually, I use it a lot. So the analogy is the difference between a crystal ball and a rubber ball. So if the decision is such that you could never, ever get it back, let's say it's your only child's graduation from law school or I don't know, something like, you know, or you're the, you know, helping your child deliver a baby. So like, if you don't get it, and then on the other hand, you have this um, hundred million dollar project that, you know, the three developers are showing up, right? (laughs) Ah, they want the same time. So this one, you know, you can't get back. This one, you're going to have to reschedule. Or if it's a rubber ball, can you throw it to someone else? (laughs) That's awesome. Right? Can you bounce it to someone else? Crystal ball, it breaks, it shatters, you can't get it back. So you can kind of like make a decision a little bit sometimes that way too, you know? But I don't know about on, you know, I don't know if you have teams, but like on my team, we have two kind of sayings that always, go around (laughs) that we use a lot one of them is you can never go wrong by doing the right thing Hmm. so again when we have to make decisions you know is this right is it ethical you know Mm -hmm. and especially when you're working with another agent because Mm -hmm. sellers and buyers come and go you'll have to work with that agent again you know so it's important. We always say team together, each accomplishes more, right? So we value that saying as well. Tell us about um, your team. How big is your team? So I have a marketing, a full-time marketing person, full-time assistant, administrative assistant. 
I had three agents in the city and two and a half out here. <laughs> two and a half. Uh, well, because the marketing person is now getting her license, so she'll be able uh, to do some showings. Fun. Yeah. Lisa, what are your expectations? You know, one of the things that we uh, love is how much the expectations from each team leader to team leader differ. So yesterday we were on with a woman. She doesn't care if her agent does one deal a year and somebody else does 20 a month. She doesn't press them. She lets them roll at their own pace. My team's a little bit different. We have expectations that everybody performs every month. Where are you with those expectations? So I'm just curious. So then what's the point of having a salesperson if they're not producing? I mean, I don't understand if that's their job and they're not doing the job. So then what's the point? Is just just to look like a person on a picture or? I don't know. That means you um, lean towards our me, way. Um, personally, I love to help my team members grow. So for me, I would want agents that want to do business that want to grow and that I can help them fulfill their potential. I know a lot of team members probably want just people like to use them to do things maybe that they can't do, don't want to do, you know, uh, maybe the younger person is better in social media or this, so they're going to use them for that. But that's not really helping that agent. It's more helping, you know. That's right, helping you, huh? So I always say, you know, again, going back to together, each accomplishes more. If you use a car analogy, so I may be the motor, you know, the person pulling whatever. Mm -hmm. But, you know, my admin, she's kind of like steering the whole car, you know. And then the salespeople are kind of the wheels on the tire. So any one of those doesn't function properly, you know. The car's not going far. So I think everybody has a purpose and I think everybody has to do their job. And yeah, I, I would want somebody who wants to grow and, and, and reach a potential. You know, the, the thing is, though, um, then, you know, how do you approach the retainership situation? Because how do you approach you know, what? Say it again. Retainership. Oh, yeah. Yeah, situation. right. Well, that's the question. Because, you know, in the beginning, well, I learned the hard way. You know, they just take your your people that you've introduced them to and, you know, they uh, do their own thing. They start communicating with your, your, you know, you've been in the business for so many years and now they, they just um, going to start communicating. Um, and some of the business is new and some of it maybe has been around, but you let them handle it. So I don't just 100%, you know, I stay much more involved. I, I'm the direct contact from now on, you know. So but you, I, you're saying that even if your agent's working a deal with someone, you still are the point of contact? Well, if, if I um, am, the, am providing the, 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 the sort of business, the lead. Ah, uh, gotcha. Mm -hmm. If it's like somebody that you've done business yeah. with, I mean, if they bring in their own their own business, you know, then that's their own business. You well, Lisa, let me ask you. So I'm just there to support them, but I mean, like a lot of times, you know, they supplement a lot of their income by you know business that I that I also give them, and it's a way yeah. because you know it's business that maybe I wasn't uh, that I wanted to share anyway. You know, and it's better to keep it in house and on the team. You know. But I mean, I don't know. I've, I've had both. I've gotten unlucky with some and then I've gotten very lucky with, with others. I mean, I have agents that have been with me six and seven years, you know, and we're still very much uh, loyal to each other. So, I, I, you know, you just have to kind of get lucky and find the right the right people, the right personality yeah. mix or something. I don't know what's yeah. your experience with that. Yeah, very much. We're dealing with it right now. Aaron and I have been, uh, Aaron's the reason I have a team. We've known each other for 20 years and eight years ago, he came and said, I'm joining your team. And I said, I didn't have one. And then he let me know, know that I did now have a team, right? Mm -hmm. And we've grown to 20 agents and then we've been four or five agents and we've expanded and we just are really reconciling for ourselves right now. What type of team do we want? Do we want to keep that high expectation which a lot of people can't meet. Do you know, we just, we just had an agent who was on the team for a week. She's like, I can't even, I can't even do all the things you guys want me to do. So well, like well, I think there's that balance, right? Yeah. There's, and again, you have to know the personality, I guess. Yeah. Right? yeah. But when 
they come on your team, you know, you give them kind of a 90 day, you know. And the thing is, you're going to support someone who wants to be supported and who wants to grow. Exactly. And the rest are going to fall out anyway. Exactly. And that's okay because why put energy and time into someone who's really not going to make sales anyway and they just suck in your energy? Yeah, I agree completely. You're just saying that. That was, that was the last team. That was the last huddle we just had. It was really very much about that. How much of the business that your agent, let's just look at your team, right? You have three, five and a half, six agents doing business. How much of their business did they generate on their own versus how much business do you hand them? And again, each agent is going to be different. Yeah, on average. But I can tell you the agents that don't last on my team are not bringing in their own business. Got it. And to me, the only reason to have team members is for two reasons. They add to your bottom line and you're adding to their bottom line. Totally. And that's the only reason. And if they're not, it's just, it's bad, bad. And it, it's it's like- Bad juju. You don't even know what to do with that. It's like, you know, it's like, it's like they would end up resenting you because you're supposed to make them the superstar. And you end up resenting them because they're not doing a damn thing. That was totally there. That's exactly how it goes. When you say you hand them business, is that those are past clients you're giving them? Do, like, do you provide, you know, pay-per-click leads or is it, do you have a CRM that fills with leads? Do you have any kind of, how much of your business is generated that way? Is it all referral and they're expected to get their own business from wherever they get it? Yeah. So, you know, if it's a property that I don't want to show that often and it's in the city, I'll bring on an agent and I'll assign that listing mm-hmm. to them and we'll right. work it sort of together. Yes. And then they'll get like a piece of the pie. Of, you know, a little But do they get unrep they get the unrepresented buyers that call on that property then if that's their property, so to speak? You know, anything that comes as a result of that, it would be the same deal. Awesome. Yeah. Right. Just like if they brought in a listing any of those buyers would fall under their deal. Exactly. I just do whatever I do for them. I do for me. It just, it works the same way. Yeah. Fun. Very much like our business. That's very much the way we do it as well. Although I believe in New York, you have to go to every showing. So we don't have to do that here. People can just get in with their super box, but we, we give an agent, uh, if it's their listing, they get all the sign calls, they get all the leads and we'll do all of the stages. Well, you know, Interestingly enough, I guess because I have that New York way of doing business, I do the same out here. I always show my own properties. Oh, really? Yeah. Even with the other agent? Because I don't think anybody can do a better job than me. So you're showing the other agent around? I'll show the other agent around. I'll show the direct buyer around. I'll show my agents how to show it. Yeah. I want to sell that property quickly. That's right, right? I want everything done, you know, perfectly. And if I see an agent is not whatever, I'll even step in and get the job done. For the other agent with their buyer. I mean, whatever needs to be. Yeah, whatever it takes. My bottom line is the same. Get that property sold. And what would be if, if you were talking to somebody new, thinking about starting a team and they were looking out... How do I empower my team or really retain my team? What do you think the number one biggest tip you would give them would be? Well, I think it's important to have sales meetings. Yeah. Because that keeps everybody on track. You're setting goals. You're connecting, you know. So I think think that that's important. And how Um, often do you do that, Lisa? Well, I mean, I used to do it every week, you know, but then we were meeting in person. And then when we weren't meeting in person, in the beginning, I was still doing it every other week, but we were shut down for like so many months Mm -hmm. that then we just started doing it like once a month, you know, then we got so busy, but I still think it's an important thing to do. I do try to talk to everybody or see everybody at least once a week, you know, like now that everybody's kind of spread all over. Yeah. I share a lot of information. Yeah. You know, ask if they need support in any areas, give a lot of feedback. But I do believe and I am pretty sure that as you are starting to open up a little bit, that 
this um, lazy, fray, whatever you call it, way of doing business is going. I'm going to start to turn up the heat just a little bit. You know, it's been on simmer for a good 16 months. Like it's time to, you know, come out of what's the word when you just kind of like on pause. Um, out of the snow day. <laughs> when like when COVID first hit, everybody's like, oh, it's a snow day. I can't leave my house. But it's now the new normal, but it's still, I get what you're saying. It's a little bit more lax. Yeah. Yeah. But I think we have to get a little more focused and a little more disciplined again. Yeah. Yep. But I still think you can, you know, have a little bit of still retain that, you know, snow day, couple days in a different way, but still get back on, you know, back on on, uh, back to business. Yeah. So, what kind of goals do you have? Our goals. We're yeah. very, we're, I'm really, really, really committed to building passive income for my agents mm-hmm. so that they're not, you know, having to ever worry about that. So we're really building passive income for our team. We want How to bunch all of, about doing that. Well, we're with the XP. So that's a built oh. in, right? So we have, you know, like the gentleman that introduced me to XP has been there a year longer than me. So he's at two and a half years and he probably makes four hundred thousand dollars passive income now, right? With Rev Share, so I'm committed to that for my agents. I'm also committed that they really do build a business they're proud of. You know, Aaron has been on the team with me almost eight years, and this summer he's literally building a plan so that he can work all morning and then take all the afternoons off and go be in the garden. Now we'll see, you know, because I think you're still we're, we're built to work when we're in real estate. I'm sure he'll still pull some twelve hour days. But I like that he could have that life. You know, Aaron got to spend all of February in Florida with his dad, who he lost a month and a half later. So I like that he gets that life. That's really important for me and my team is that they get that life that they love. Have you heard of the name Michael Valdez? Uh Uh-uh. Who's that? So he left Sotheby's to start opening up EXPs, I guess, around the world. Oh, yeah? Yeah. How's he doing? A good friend of mine. Yeah, How I long ago did you join EXP? What's that? Yes. How That's long ago did you? Oh, November of 2019. 19. So a year and a half. Oh, from what company? Keller Williams. I was with Keller Williams for 10 years. Wow. Yeah. How long have you been with Sotheby's? About eight years. I was with uh, Prudential Douglas Elliman for about 28 and then another company um, for about maybe twelve years. Yeah. How many of the how many of the million dollar listing guys do you know from New York? Oh, I mean, I bump into all of them. Really. All of them. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Funny. You know, it's TV. It's all <laughs> it's all made up. I know. It's yeah. funny, huh? Yeah. All made up. Yeah. Huh. Mm-hmm. Excellent. When uh, Frederick first joined Douglas Elliman, which is why he went over there to do this, the owner, Howard Lauber, his son, Michael Lauber, worked for the company. So, you know, they interviewed him. He had to take listings from other agents, pretend they were his, and and then pretend to do these um, negotiations that it, it was all pretend. Wow. Yeah. Um, what is TV? I get it, man. But, you know, like, obviously, you know, the, the, a lot of established agents would never, ever do, you know. Reality TV. Yeah, I know. Well, you never know how they're going to twist it. You never know how they're going to edit it. They can make you look like a complete jerk if you're not careful. Yeah, that's scary. Right? I know. I'm with you. I would not want to do it either. Yeah. Yeah. Because they could just pull out whatever they want to pull out and taint it and twist it any direction they want to go. Yeah. Would you do it? I don't like to be followed around and, and, and have every little, you know, thing that especially in this environment, like even earlier when, when I said about a European family, the um, head of the um, Long Island Board of Realtors, she was let go because she said, you know, my Italian grandmother who had the plastics on her couch. And apparently yeah. that was like derogatory towards what Italians? She's Italian herself. She's Italian. It's, she's talking about her own family. You no. Know? So 
that part would scare me that I would just, you know, not mean to say something and it just be like a rubber band can screwed. And next thing I know, I'm like some kind of hater of, I don't know what, you know? Yeah. And then the more you try to defend yourself, the yeah, it gets worse. The worse you look, you know? So like that part would scare me as far as like communicating like value or knowledge or opinion you know that's something else yeah all day long but not like you know some made-up reality type of that's why aaron could never go on tv he's way too way correct <laughs> we're <laughs> always calling hr on aaron <laughs> I'm from New York. HR! in the sentence in an expletive it was like you said please that's just the way it was so uh, you know my brother's got a house out in Amagansett. Uh, you know, you're you're living my life. That's my family's life. Oh, does he want to sell it? Yeah. Ah, ah, spoken like a true broker. Well said. Does he have friends who may be interested? Uh, you know what? Do you a, know, I just got a, a referral um, those kinds of from a, I think she was with Remax or something. They're not out here. And I, I got a referral for a historic home out in Montauk for like 7.2. And it came from another broker. Brokerage yeah, he, my brother's got a big place on Park Ave and, and out in Amagansett. And, um, what does he do for a living? He is three-quarter retired now. He was a money manager for a privately held family. I was going to say something with finance. Yeah, that's uh, pretty typical. Yeah. So he's he's a great guy and I love him dearly. And I'll be out your way. I'll be out that way in September. We're gonna spread my parents' ashes out on Montauk where my mom just that was my mom. Well, that's where I have that estate. So maybe I can meet you out there. Yeah, and yeah. uh Gurney's is out there. It's incredible. What's Gurney's? It's a restaurant. Oh. It's more than a restaurant, it's a hotel resort. Oh it's uh they're they're redoing the spa for like two years. It's just a, all right. A, well, then I'll I'll come with, and you and I can go get spa treatments and drink wine. My Aaron goes and uh, spreads ashes. Look it up. Look it up. Gurney. All right, good. Fabulous. All right. Well, we're coming towards the end of our time here, Lisa. Is there anything that you want the listeners or new? I mean, particularly new team leaders or people that are really starting to take it from the individual level to something bigger. Anything you want well, to tell them or leave them with? You know, again, I think that just you know have good relationships with your fellow agents is definitely yeah. one. Yeah. But you know, the passive income that you brought up, I would say that when you're starting your career, you know put from each deal money aside uh, for two things. As this Southern broker that was on a, a Zoom with us uh, a few weeks ago, she said, stash your cash. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. know, while the going is good, stash your cash. Um, but the other thing I would say is, is uh, put money aside so that you can start investing in real yeah. estate and invest in yourself and invest in your own properties. Yeah, I would say those, those will be the two things. Yeah. Good advice. Good advice. Sounds like you just a party started there where you are. Yeah, it is a little loud. I think they all came back from some seeing a bunch of places. Very good. Well, it was delightful being with you. Thank you for sending your letter. Make sure you email me your all your contacts. In Absolutely well. Thank you so much for the time. This is great to meet you. It's really Thank great to you. meet you. And don't forget to reach out to me, Aaron, when you I come will. out. Totally. We'll we'll and we'll send you a copy of this, of this okay. podcast as well. That was great. Bye. All right, bye, Lisa. Take care. Great. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Right, bye. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Abundant Life Podcast. Brought to you by Christine and & Company and EXP Realty, the global online brokerage powered by top agents and cutting-edge technology. If you liked what you heard, consider subscribing wherever you listen to podcasts. Your hosts have been award-winning brokers, Christine Andreessen and Aaron Hendon. For more on them, visit christineandcompany.com.